I'm Andrea Shambly, and this is my new identity as the widow of John McNamara of the Annapolis Capitol. Um, I left off when I wrote in the Washington Post about the hours it took for anyone to give the names of the dead at the Capitol to the crisis response team and my lost sleep and my lost weight and my lost sense of safety. Since then, I learned how the children struggled. My little nieces were up late waiting for the news, and it's the first night they can stay up late enough to see fireflies. Their mom has to explain who allows the party lights on the same night that their Uncle John is senselessly taken. Why are they so pretty tonight? Where can we sleep that's safe from a shooting? And I don't have a good answer. John's godson is two years old, his swing needs a push, and he looks me in the face and asks, Uncle John? I told him Uncle John was in the moon. So how do I keep going now? I started writing an absurdity of the day when MetLife saw his death certificate and said they wouldn't pay his life insurance claim because he was shot. They told me, you're his partner. They told me, you probably did it. So I went to see the memorials on Bestgate Road. I put his favorite Marilyn Terrapin's hat on his cross. I wrote the lyrics to the Beatles' I Will song on his hat. I don't know where his hat ended up. I don't know where the clothes he was wearing ended up. They're evidence, but his shoes had been slipped under his desk and I could have those and the books that had been on top of his desk. I donated his summer shirts to a charity that dresses men for job interviews. They might as well have the summer shirts in July. And I do donated his winter coats in early December for the same reason. I did keep that black jacket, though, for now. On the day I was supposed to return from our summer vacation, I got ready for work, and I struggled with every decision, like whether to cover my pasty legs with spray tan or hose, and I decided neither. I wore a dress that was too big. I wear his press pass under my shirt and his wedding ring on my right hand. My colleagues ask me how I can go to work, and I ask them how I can go home. I visit the National Expert Grief Counselor for Mass Shootings. I go for five months until the insurance runs out and the traffic to the office in Northern Virginia frazzles my nerves. The counselor tells me to do whatever it takes to make sure I don't come home to a dark, silent house, so I ask Alexa to play a romantic love song. The song that comes on is My Life, the Beatles song that we played at his memorial. I use a lot of sick leave. I show up at events like this. I finished his book on basketball. I speak. I listen. I stand silently as a witness to other people's pain. I wake up at 3.30 in the morning screaming, or at least I think I'm screaming. John's not there to tell me whether I'm screaming out loud or not. He's not there to hug me while I shake. On my days off, I change my credit cards. Verizon won't let me put my name on the bill. If I disable his phone, I'll lose the texts and pictures while his lawyers and the police have the phone. I have to change my passwords when my accounts are hacked by people who are angry at my speeches supporting background checks. So now what? I still look for his car in the driveway. I still do a double take when there's just one plate of food for dinner or one load of laundry for one. I still reach out for him at night, expecting that he's emerged on his pillow. I write a lot. My writing teacher wants to know what my season is. What's the season where everything is dying and still forcing its way out? It's anguished and ugly and unfinished like the new me. So I don't know where I'm going, but I do know I can't stand still. We're not waiting for what we know what to do. We know what to do. We're not waiting for a tragedy. We've had tragedies worse than we can ever imagine. I hope you won't stand still. Come with us. We know what we need to do. We need background checks for everyone. We need red flag laws. We need to reinstate the ban on bump stocks and high-capacity magazines and military-style weapons. 
So next will be the list of the 31 Maryland children shot since Valentine's Day at Parkland. So for them, don't stand still. The Gun Sense Action Network has a lot of volunteer activities. You can go to vote.org. You can find your elected representatives and call them and support the law at Congress to close the gun show loophole. Thank you.